Well, welcome back. This is the six of six videos looking at Wheeler's most excellent textbook, uh, Security Risk Management. And what we're going to do during this particular video is look at knowledge management, one of the additional readings uh, associated with the course. And so, uh, a knowledge management is looking at how do we manage tacit and explicit uh, value within the uh, organization. And what the paper does is tries to apply it against an octave process in terms of a risk assessment framework. All right, well, a couple of definitions going in over the next couple of slides. Uh, the first of which is if you're doing an information security risk assessment, you have a kind of three phases as the author of the paper suggests, the first of which is the establishment of context, what's the scope and environment that we're operating in. The second is the identification uh, of risk in the organization, which means you're identifying all the threats and vulnerabilities and all the assets. And then the uh, risk analysis based on that risk identification, determining on what you're going to do. And again, we're looking at likelihood and looking at impact uh, to uh, look at uh, the various risks, and then make a decision to avoid, mitigate, transfer, or accept those risks. All right, as we uh, go back and look at knowledge management or organizational knowledge, there are two uh, different types. One is explicit knowledge that is encoded in some form and can be articulated. Another is tacit, which is just in the minds of the uh, knowers, but influences how we get things done within a particular organization. And then based on that, there are four processes, socialization, externalization, combination, and internalization to convert explicit knowledge into tacit knowledge or tacit knowledge into explicit knowledge or to strengthen explicit knowledge into a more complex form. All right, we're not going to do the in-class exercise uh, that you would if you were in my class. But instead, we're going to move over to one of the graphics from the uh, video uh, or from the uh, article. And as you can see, it's starting off with this idea of identifying um, what uh, people are in the organization uh, from those. What are the critical processes uh, that are uh, uh, available? And then uh, starting to pull that information in through one of those uh, four previously mentioned uh, mechanisms for converting explicit and tacit uh, knowledge and capturing that. And as the, the graph indicates, the key folks or key individuals within your organization, you're just going to use normal uh, risk mitigation, uh, whereas where you've got explicit or uh, tacit information or distributed information within the community of practice, you're going to use one of those other, one of the uh, four uh, techniques, either socialization, internalization, externalization, or combination um, to uh, capture that knowledge in the uh, uh, context and then use that as a basis for scope and context of doing your risk assessment. So a pretty interesting idea. I have to tell you, uh, having uh, uh, gone through audits for a good number of years now, uh, I haven't seen this approach used. I think it would be fascinating to see it done, and I think you'd get a better audit out of it. It's a great paper uh, bringing a different perspective on uh, information security risk assessment. My how, how the time has flown. Uh, we're at the end of Chapter 9. Uh, so this concludes the six of six videos on um, uh, Chapter 9 of Wheeler's Most Excellent Textbook, Security Risk Assessment. And what we're going to do in the uh, next chapter is pick up on risk assessment uh, techniques, pretty technical uh, chapter actually from the book. So keep on studying, keep on learning. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.